Welcome to our lecture online. Our next example looks very similar to the one we did on the previous video. Remember we had some trouble because one of the possible solutions was not acceptable because it made one of the denominators zero. Let's see if the same thing will happen over here. Well first of all before we can come up with the lowest common denominator we're going to have to factor one of our denominators right here. So let's do that. So this becomes x minus 3 over x plus 10, that doesn't change, plus 57 divided by, we can factor out an x and we're left with an x plus 10 equals 5 over x. Now let's see here, what are all the possible denominators? Uh, we have x and x plus 10, so that will be the lowest common denominator, x times x plus 10. Now let's multiply both sides of the equation by the lowest common denominator, x times x plus 10, and x times x plus 10, like so. Now this is going to be multiplied by both terms on the left side, and if we do that, notice that the x plus 10s cancel out, and we're left with an x times x minus 3. Here, notice that both the x and the x plus 10 cancels out, and we're left with a 57 equals, here the x's will cancel out, and we're left with a 5 times x plus 10. Now we can go ahead and multiply everything through to see what we get. x times x is x squared, minus 3x plus 57 equals 5x plus 50. Now notice that it's a quadratic equation, which means we want to move all the terms over to one side. x squared minus 3x plus 57 minus 5x minus 50 equal to 0. And then over here we're going to collect all common terms. So we have x squared minus 3 minus 5 which is minus 8x and plus 57 minus 50 is plus 7 equal 0. And notice that is probably factorable. So let's go ahead and try it. We have an x and an x. Notice that both sides must be negative because this is positive and that's negative. And when we multiply, we get 7, add, we get 8. So that's 7 and 1, and that should work out. So here, we can conclude that either x minus 7 equals 0, or that x minus 1 equals 0. Because when we multiply two binomials together and the product is 0, that means either one or the other binomial must be 0 which means that x equals 7 is one possible solution, or x equals 1 is another possible solution. But before we claim victory, let's go over here and look at all our denominators. Notice that x cannot equal negative 10, and x cannot equal 0, because that would cause us to have a 0 denominators. So we can say that x should not equal to 0, and x should not equal to negative 10, because negative 10 plus 10 gives us 0. But neither one of our solutions are one of these two values, so we can then claim that both of these satisfy the equation, and that is how it's done.